Thank you so much for being here, Nadia. Oh, I'm, thank you for having me today. I really appreciate your time, and like, it's amazing to see like everything that's been happening for you. Yeah. And it's so funny. So I want to trace it back to when we first met, which was with the Do Your Part Celebrity Game. Yeah. Shout out to Rose Management. Shout out. Yes. <laughs> that was a great game. It by was. Way. I was honestly, it was probably one of the best like experiences that I've had. Like, yeah. Me too, just, actually. It was just good vibes, good energy all around. We, I remember it. So we went to media day, and yeah. Was, and to be honest, I was like. I don't know who that is, but she's really beautiful and like her hair, bomb. And Thank you. Yeah, all day, always. Even playing. though you slapped me in ball, like, <laughs> no. I was like, why do they hire me for this ball thing? Because I don't play ball. But... Not even. Yeah. <laughs> that day, I was like, I don't know who she is, but whatever. Like we'll yeah. get to know each other. And I remember, I think um, I started off on Roy's team, and then you were on on Jay's. Yes. And then and then they switched, switched it. it. So I was like, okay, whatever. So we're yeah. gonna go with it. And then I remember we were on the court. And that moment where I got, I fell, I got that concussion. Oh, so it's oh happening. Gosh, and I remember just like, there's a video of us like playing and you're just like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And I was like, there's a video yeah, of that? I need good. that footage. Yes. I, think I think it's on, yeah, it was on YouTube on my, I have Really? A, I have a okay, of it. you gotta show me that. <laughs> yes, I will. And it's really cute because I'm just like, oh, look at us running around back and forth. Look at us like having each other's backs. <laughs> Literally, like, playing from this time. Game. Yeah. But like, from then, your energy has obviously been so receptive, and Thank I'm you. appreciative of your, you know, your positivity and whatnot. So, could you take me like to your story and what you actually do as a music artist? Yeah, actually, it's pretty funny. So, when i um, before I got into the music industry, I was actually a figure skater. <gasps> Yeah. Okay. I was a professional figure skater yeah. and I used to compete across the GTA. Wow. And I really do have medals because people like try to clock me on it and be yeah. like, no, you really weren't. I'm like, I got I, the receipts, boo. So you were doing pirouettes <laughs> and like spinning and all that? Pirouettes. Things. I was learning the axle during the time when I wow. finally decided like to go fully into music. And mm. it's funny how I left figure skating was so when you do your solos and you yeah. compete, you're not allowed to mouth to the lyrics. And if you do, you lose points the judges That's will take points off yeah. because it looks unprofessional. Okay. The thing with skating is like, it's all kind of like expressive throughout your body mm -hmm. and you can use your hands. So mm -hmm. my problem was because I loved singing so much, all the songs I would be like full on yeah. jamming to it and I would totally forget it. So I would start losing points. And when I realized that I was losing too many, I was like, okay, I think it's time to make a final decision of what road I want to take in my yeah. life. So then I, I quit figure skating. I kind of do miss it to this day. Oh, yeah. Little, I mean, little, you can always, they always say you can always pick it back up. Like, that is kind of like riding a bike, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? Maybe yeah, I can incorporate yeah. it in a music video. Ooh, no, that'd be super <laughs> right? dope. Like, I think. You yeah, know, there's like an, a really cool ice rink somewhere in Miami. I saw like 1985. Like, yeah. he's a friend of mine, and he was there. Uh -huh. I think like two years ago, and they have like really cool lights down there. And I was like, hmm, music video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me know. I'm yeah, like, yeah, we I'm need to all go. Yeah, <laughs> turn up, figure up skating. Yeah, no, that's that'll so definitely cool. be the first. But yeah, so that's how I. Um, started getting into music and I was actually classically trained first. Wow. Um, I was singing opera music to start um, and because I'm Italian and Jamaican mm -hmm. I started learning how to sing in Italian like I was doing Italian opera mm -hmm. so my teacher was like if you can sing opera music you can sing anything yeah and that's kind of like how I started wow. getting to, into it full-time I started singing at weddings mm -hmm. Um, family weddings, which was big Italian weddings, and then other people's weddings. Um, and then in high school, I went to a school of the arts. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, um, I ended up enrolling myself in an agency in Toronto at the time. I was super young, so yeah. I think this was like first year of high school. Yeah. And this agency, they only had acting, dancing, and something else, but it, it, there was no singing there. And I thought, okay, you know what? They don't have singing, even though that's my number one calling mm -hmm. right now. But let me try to come here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a stepping stone. I might meet some people you yep. never know. I ended up meeting Director X, who's Ooh. still a good friend of mine yep. to this day. And mm -hmm. he's he's been doing he's big things. Doing, he's a legend yeah, in the city. We know yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Kudos, shout out to Director X. <laughs> And uh, I met him, I was super young, and he said, you know, I see something in you, and I'd like to start putting you in some stuff, um, you know, you, you can dance. See, that's and, what I love, when people just empower you. and Right, and, and he you. did. Yeah. He did. He yeah. actually pointed me out in a room full of tons of amazing dancers. Wow. At the time, I was like, I'm not that good. Yeah. But a lot of self-doubt comes in when it comes to these things, and we, like, we're yeah. just we're complimenting each other, we're not even taking it, but we're like, no, like, let's you know, be confident in myself, sorry. A hundred percent. So yeah, and then um, shortly after that, he ended up putting me as the lead female um, role and dancer in the Mario's Let Me Love You video. 
So that was a big turning point for wow. me in my life because going back to school, I ended up losing so many friends. Mm-hmm. People were like, oh, she, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That was really hard in high school because mm-hmm. it was a big deal. Like, okay. can you imagine, like, you go home, like, you're on Much Music, you're on BET, yeah. and you're like, whoa. And all these things are happening for you, and then right. they're like, feeling a ways because they, you know, haven't like, made the song. They, they hated it. And then, you know, my family in Italy, like, it's on their TV there. Like, that song was like a, a love language song. Like, yeah. Let me love you. Neo wrote that for Mario. Uh-huh. And everybody loved that song. So it was everywhere. So that was like probably my biggest buzz that started for me in the city. And Congrats. I just kind of used that to meet other people in the music industry. And I just started building like my credibility from there. And, you know, I had some managers and not everybody always has your best interest at heart. But um, I ended up finally finding a team that I worked with later on down the road. I took some hiatuses. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Could you tell me more about those hiatuses and like things that you've kind of gone through? Yeah. Um, I think, okay, back then it was harder than it is now. It's still hard now mm-hmm. for females in general, yep. I find. I feel like before you even open your mouth, they're judging you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been really hard, mm-hmm. especially like working with producers or working with, you know, other male managers. Unfortunately, the music business is a male-dominated industry, yep. and they've done their thing, but I feel like women, we have a power that men will never be able to tap into. Speak it, sis. <laughs> it's, the, it's the truth, and really so I, I always kind of, um, I was never able to accomplish or fully complete songs with males back then because we would get halfway and then maybe they wanted something else and that's just not how I was raised nope. so Likewise. it would just never finish and I just couldn't sleep at night doing what they wanted to do mm-hmm. so I would take hiatuses and I would take this time to reflect and be like is this what I really want to do yeah. but my my like body would start itching to get back into it yeah. and then I finally it's uh, in you like you're an 100%. artist yeah like 100% And then two and a half years ago, um, I ended up getting with another uh, label, like an independent label out here Mm -hmm. in Toronto. And I I ended up going full force. Like I was doing T-Dot Fest and I was traveling a lot. Um, I was on Fox 29, the Q show, like twice last year. Um, my, My music videos were being picked up. Like it was so strange. Like all of a sudden, these last two years, it just- Timing. Yeah, timing is everything. It really truly is, yeah. Now, you, you touched on it, being a woman in the industry, but also just in general, like how have you kind of navigated mm-hmm. being a woman in, in life? Like, how has that been for you? Um, it has its blessings yes. and its curses. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, you have to really learn how to be strong in a way where, like, okay, most men are gonna wanna flirt with you. Mm-hmm. Let's just be real here, mm-hmm. okay? Especially if you're pretty beautiful and you've got things going on for you. A hundred percent. And I think (laughs) they'll get offended if you right off the bat tell them like, no. So what I've learned kind of as a woman is we have to use our womanly charms in a certain way where you're not completely dissing them, but you you still kind of put grounds down that like, you know, I'm here for business, but Mm -hmm. we're cool. Like we can still vibe that way. So that's been like a big thing for me to learn growing up in this music industry is how to keep everybody kind of I don't know status quo I yeah, guess, yeah for yeah. lack of a better agree, yes. <laughs> phrase <laughs> no yeah. I agree with you and mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things too where you don't want to give off that vibe either exactly but then they kind of you know feel that way certain times and you're just like how do I even navigate through this it's so hard it is girls we have a hard, hard right here <laughs> well, yeah the thing is we've, we've navigated and we've, we've made a mark and a, and a huge thing about mm-hmm. it is being strong and being yeah. strong-willed about who you are, and it's like you know what I'm here to work, yeah. and I'm gonna show you that I'm here to work. Cause exactly, I'm not about anything else, and yeah. that's those are things that I want to be known for when I'm walking into a room. It's not about you exactly. Know, oh, this girl is this and that. It's no, she works hard. She, you know, yeah. she's talented. She's doing her thing. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. want you on that. It's true. Yeah. Just touching more on your music aspect, mm-hmm. you do mainly a hip hop and R and B. Yes. And obviously you just mentioned that you started an opera. Yes. Are there different genres that you're trying to tap into or are you Yeah. I'm really glad that you asked me that. Yeah. So before I ended up getting with this uh Toronto based label two years ago, mm-hmm. um I went to Italy for a year mm-hmm. and I was working with an artist that signed to Sony Music Italia out there. His name is Lyong. And me and him teamed up 
and he's interesting too. So the, I'm Italian and Jamaican, and he's African and Italian. So that's oh, that's yeah. really funny. And we were like a brother and sister that you know we've never had before, and we've mm -hmm. grown up so similar with people like asking like what are you you yeah. know so when i went to italy i was actually doing trap music what? like hardcore trap <laughs> really yeah. you have like I actually so recorded yeah I, I do actually i've had videos too um I, you have they've been released like i've never they were oh, um so like i could go and find it right now <laughs> you can't anymore okay <laughs> um the label that i ended up getting with uh -huh. two and a half years ago here in toronto they were like take it all down oh, like Okay. Yeah, but you know, I kind of wish that I didn't listen to that and kept them up because um, the, <laughs> the stuff was, growth. it yeah. shows your growth and actually the stuff wasn't bad, like it was actually pretty cool. Yeah, and I in Italy, they <laughs> really love trap music. You know, it's so weird, but they love trap music, they love hip hop, R&B, like, and they know the stuff out there, like, mm -hmm. so good. It's insane. And they actually, they've got a lot of um, African people that have now moved to Italy and they even speak better Italian than me. So yeah. it's insane. I know um, a few words, grazie. You know, manja, 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 prego, yeah, prego. Yes. <laughs> I went, well, my family's That's half good. my family's out in Italy, so oh, I went there nice. a couple of years ago, and uh, you have the accent like down. Thank you. Right. I learned from my cousins, but beautiful. You're okay. Good. Yeah, cool. So you know, you were obviously growing up in Toronto, is that mm. the case? And um, what has the culture kind of done for you in the music industry and wow. and tell me more about how your experience has been living in Toronto and, and building um well as I said before like I'm Italian Jamaican and I find I was born and raised here though and I find that in Toronto we are like this big melting pot mm -hmm. we have people from everywhere all over the everywhere. world right yeah. and I think that's so cool I think that's something that we have that I don't, I don't know, I don't really feel like anyone, any other country or whatever, we have it like that here in, in our city is especially. Um, I, I love growing up here. Mm -hmm. I've been so many places and I don't feel like anything is like Toronto. You're right. Um, we have so many different like slangs and yeah. different things and everyone wants to hop on our wave. And, and I, it, it I'm weird. proud of that. Yeah. Aren't you proud? Like, I am. <laughs> you know, I'm really proud of that. And I, and I feel like it has shaped music in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I think it's shaped my music too. Like even the things I, I'm saying, even the music I'm writing now, mm -hmm. like I can find myself saying like little Toronto slang yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, wow, it has shaped yeah even the way my music is. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like and it. Even, and even listening to your music, like we were, when we were setting up here, mm -hmm. we were putting your music on blast on the speaker. Yeah, and I was like, ooh girl, you. like she has the, the vibes and the rhythms going, but then she's incorporating so many different things yes. into it. And it's it's a reflection of culture. Thank you. Love, so. Thank you so much. Keep that going. I'm going to keep it going. Yeah. I'm going to go <laughs> even deeper this yes. year. Yes. Yeah, 2020. Exactly. It happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we were at Figures yes, the other night. Yeah, I bring that up. Yeah. Tell us, like, so obviously you're hosting. Or, mm -hmm. um, tell me more about how you got that gig or like what. Yeah. What kind of um, I guess like, so, okay, so certain promoters in the city, I guess like they've been getting more onto my music and stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, realizing that there's lots going on with my brand mm -hmm. and they reached out to me and they said, you know, we want to have you at Figures, we want you to host the night and they said, do you have any new music coming out? And I said, actually, it's funny that you asked because mm -hmm. I have a new song that I'm writing right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it'll be fully done for Figures, but I would love to show a snippet of it. So um, they allowed it, they were excited about it. I ended up having the song done, but I'm not gonna release it until like later on in 2020. Fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that night, I, I remember, cause you were there and I performed it, but yeah, the song is called Karma. Yes. Um, and it was really good, by the way. Thank was, you. Yeah, I don't know if you heard me scream in the background. I did, actually. <laughs> I heard you, my sister, yes. a couple of my other friends. You know, all your homies, we were there, we were like, yes, girl. Yeah, you guys were yes. supporting me, thank you. No, you know what, that, that like gases you up, you're like, yes, yes, you get in the moment. Yes, yes. But that was great, and... Um, you're so great at performing. Just Thank you. Yeah. And that was more like on the spot kind of thing, like... Anytime you have a mic in hand and you're there, you're in your element, element and I'm like, really, yes, yes, Nadia. Like, I'm always... Thank like, you. Oh, but sorry, continue. No, 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 for sure. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, so that song is pretty much about a, a recent situation that mm -hmm. I've I've been through, and unfortunately, it was mixed with this music industry, and it's been it's been hard. Yeah. But um, you know, we're women, honey. We're resilient. We are. So we persevere. We do what we got to do, and we'll get it done. Yeah, so. and I put in the music, yeah. and that's what is going to you know make me grow and yeah. get past it. And yeah. so during that time, obviously, a lot of emotions are probably going on through your mind and. Mm -hmm. uh, the period of time of, of how you're kind of going to overcome this this whole situation. Yeah. What was it that kind of made you realize, 
I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to continue doing what I want to do yeah. on my own terms. What what was that trigger point? I think the mistake that I made um, was mixing business with pleasure. Mm -hmm. And like that's a huge thing that I want to warn many women about in any business that they're doing. It doesn't have to be just music industry, any business. Honey, don't, don't. mix business with pleasure. I will say it again. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't do it. it. It actually, like, I know in the moment you think, like, you know, everything's great, but it, it never ends up well. And that's kind of what happened with my situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, anytime you have your business involved with somebody that you're, you know, romantically involved with, things can get in the crossfire. Then mm -hmm. sometimes people can get jealous. Um, sometimes people can steal what belongs to you, and uh, things get messy. And um, that's kind of like what happened with my situation. Obviously, there it's, it's, on a much bigger scale mm -hmm. um, but I had to you know be the bigger woman in yes. this and and take it and use it as power rather than take it and let me melt away of course and that's why I was I said you know what let me put this anger and this like this deception that happened and put it in the music mm -hmm. and be able to like kind of rise from the ashes yeah. I guess wow. well yeah. thank you for sharing that thank that's, you it's it's hard and we tend to be vulnerable when it, we're in those situations Perfect and word. you clearly took the time to overcome it and get to this point and I I know everything's going to work out to be what it Thank is that you. you want it to be so I'm very excited to see you flourish. Thank you. And on that note, mm -hmm. what is it that you or what are some experiences that kind of shaped you as this, aside from that and I like me personally I've gone through a lot of hardships whenever it came to being friends with women they would get jealous mm -hmm. or they they would put me through moments where you know trying to get me fired from my job they would try and do the most just to make me feel lesser than and down yeah has that ever happened to you I'm sure it has um, every, and every to, right? Day. Yeah. <laughs> talk to me like, yeah what situations day. have kind of you know um, come to your life I've had, you know, it was just unfortunate. I have had people, like even back from Mario video days when I lost friends in school just from that. Like it's so mm -hmm. it's so silly. It's just that they see, they get jealous, you know. Yeah. They see you on the TV show. But I've been the same person I've always been. It yeah. doesn't change for me, you know. Um, it's, it's hard, but I think that what's helped me get through it all was the support of my family. We're so supportive. We're so close. And I think it's so important to have someone in your life that's close like that. Other people might not be their families. It might be a really good friend. Mm -hmm. But it, just that one person it takes just to be able to bounce that off of, you know, just be like, I'm sad, you know, I'm feeling this. And someone that can empower you. If you have that, that's, you're flying. Yeah. Yeah. And I have my family for that. So I, I don't know where I'd be without them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that and and people taking those things for granted sometimes mm -hmm. like you've got your family you've got your friends and those are that you really your support squad i'm very grateful and i i agree with you on that like yeah. a lot of the things that i've overcome mm -hmm. i wouldn't have been able to do unless i had somebody there reminding me like you're good you're amazing like mm -hmm. you're, the things you're doing you're on the right path yeah. because we go through the motions we're, we're humans we are right and i have feelings too <laughs> for real like right? and people don't realize that and mm -hmm. it's uh it's a tough you know, battle to face, but then eventually, like you see that your family's there for you, your, your friends yeah. are there for you, and and you overcome it. So exactly, it's amazing. So at this point of the episode, we're going to touch on a little bit of this or that, some favorites, some rapid fire lightning questions. Okay. Uh, light, lightning round. Yeah. So first question: jerk chicken and rice and peas or pasta? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh and man. Such a good Italian to make jerk you know. chicken and rice and peas. Okay. I'm a pescatarian now. Me too. Yes. <laughs> it's been how long? <laughs> Two years now. Me too. Actually, actually longer. What am I saying? Yeah, a little bit more. Almost three time. years. Almost three oh, years. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Back I have to say pasta, but I do love my jerk chicken. If we were like going to jerk the shrimp or yeah, jerk yeah, something yeah. else, <laughs> then I'd say that. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, I guess pasta in this situation. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Like, back in 2017 when my friends she took me to Jamaica we went to oh wow like, was that your first time uh no I went back in 2013 okay, okay. I've done a, a mission trip back then but um anyhow like she took me everywhere food oh it, like it can't insane. go wrong like it, it is and it does not compare to the you know the res uh what am I saying it doesn't compare to the, the here? resort oh and, the resort yeah <laughs> Sis, you gotta go local. You gotta get your pan chicken. You, you gotta get. Gotta go <laughs> local, okay? Because if you ain't, then you ain't getting the real deal. <laughs> you said it. You're perfect. You already know. Yes. 
It's true. And yep. on pasta note, yes. what's your favorite type of pasta? Gnocchi. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's like small. It's like little potatoes yes. for people that don't know. Yeah, yeah it's oh my gosh. Yeah. And it melts a, in a your specific mouth. Uh, sauce. Uh, I like rosé sauce. Ooh. So it's not like all the way red. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a mix with cheese White and stuff. I, yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. Girl, you make me hungry. <laughs> it's, and same thing like with Jamaica. Like when you yeah. go local, it's the same thing with Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You got it. Like, like from the yeah. hotels, it's different. But when you go like right mm-hmm. in the city and you know you, you have Rome all and oh. best pizza, best pasta, you gotta go. The whole vibe. Yeah. yeah. I had it. Hundred percent. So yes. Um, curly hair or straight hair? This is for me? Yeah. <laughs> Straight. Every time I go curly, I look like a poodle. Not even. Yeah. Your last look was, I love that little ombre going on. He oh, light, yeah. That was more like like a curl wave. Curl wave. I'm okay, thinking okay. like curly oh, curls. Okay, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, look like a poodle. <laughs> I'll still try it anyway, but they straight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Favorite destination? Ooh. That I've been to or want to go to? Both. Okay. Um... See, this is the thing. I love both Italy and Jamaica. Yeah. So I love how it always comes down to those two. It's so hard. It's hard I know. I, it's it's part. It's yeah. <laughs> but um, destinations that like favorite destinations I'd want to go is either Japan mm-hmm. or Dubai. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are like they're up there. Top. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna touch into inspiration now. Obviously, mm-hmm. the show is inspired to inspire. So yes. I want to know who inspires you. Um, Michael Jackson. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I just think he was just so incredible. He's timeless. There will never be another Michael Jackson. But what I will say, as far as females in the industry right now, mm-hmm. that maybe emulate like a, a, a star or stage presence that Michael had, I have to say Beyonce. Okay. I yeah. think uh, okay. her skill on stage is in- incredible. Yeah. I don't know anybody that could match that right now as, as far as female artists. 100%. Even though there's so many female artists out there that I absolutely love. Yeah. I think Beyonce, when it comes to the stage, is somebody that mm-hmm. inspires me mm-hmm. to just leave it all out there. I yeah. went to, I think it was, yeah, it was on the run tour a few years ago. Oh my ago gosh, I never went to that tour. Honey. Was it good? Yes. And that's when it, it she, <laughs> when it, I realized, I was like, wow, Queen B. Yeah. This is why they call her this. She just. She's Everything incredible. You said. She is incredible. I saw her when she came down here with Destiny's Child. This was like years ago, mm-hmm. and even then, I could see. I was like, wow. Like every time she did her own thing, like she did some solo songs because yeah. she was just touching on her first album mm-hmm. around that time, and I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And incredible. That is very incredible. How do you feel you inspire, mm-hmm. and how do you think that what you're doing can mm-hmm. make that impact in the community and for you? I think right now with me, how I'm inspiring is there's not really any like female R and B artists mm-hmm. with like colored hair. Yes. Um, yes. And I, I kind of, when I made this choice to go blue, like blue is my favorite color. But when I made this choice, I was kind of like, it's very loud, mm-hmm. and you you got to be very confident within That's yourself. That's how I felt when I got my hair dyed. I was like, ooh, mm, tone it darker. Sis, you don't know, like, right? Don't because know. it's like it's so loud, yeah. and I think that I'm trying to inspire women just to just go out there. Do it. Do it. Whatever you want to do. Who cares what people say? If this is you, if you can own this and rock Mm -hmm. this and love this, Mm -hmm. do it. Preach it, girl. Do it. And you're going to inspire people because people that maybe are scared to take the sleep, they're going to see people like me or other girls Mm -hmm. that are doing like, wow, it's inspiring me to, you know, to want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'm doing that for you are for everyone i want to say even yeah. guys too yeah, <laughs> yeah. everybody and yeah. it's so funny that the topic of hair i really wanted to dye my hair purple really wa- a long time ago that's a nice but color too thank you um a lot of self-doubt a lot of like hesitation uh, should i do it should i not and then yeah. i finally did the blonde so i was like oh okay so when it grows out and like it's right. at the ends maybe i'll do a one two like semi-permanent you know yeah and, and the blonde looks nice on you too thank you yeah. it was my first step to like Getting, getting really the color. Yeah. So wow. I'm here now. It's a process. It is. <laughs> it is. But it's fun. It is. Yeah. I was like, okay, actually, I do like this look. And someone someone commented on one of my pictures and they're like, okay, J Lo. And I was like, oh, don't you dare. That's, like, uh, that's another thing. I was thing super. That I love. Right? And she's another incredible she, performer. She's amazing. Yeah. And she's done really well this year. Yes. I know. Wow. I'm a big fan of J Lo. Me too. too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's next? Mm-hmm. What are some some ventures? What are some things that you're tapping into? What is what's going on with Nadia Stone? Thank you. I I've always wanted to get into acting as well. Yes. And you know what? I'm like 
we're in 2020. Let's do it all. Why not? <laughs> let's yeah. do. Let's drop the EP. Let's do some acting. And I've actually done some skits now. I don't know if you've seen. Yeah. So like, I'm slowly trying to I show have. people like. And you're good at it. Thank like, you. It comes naturally. It's, it's fun. Not, like I love that. It's mm-hmm. one of those things where like some people do it and like they want to be comedic, but yes. then it comes off kind of awkward. And right, like, right. Oh, watch another one of these. But then I saw yours and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> funny, like, funny. <laughs> can't wait to the next one. But, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna be doing some more acting stuff. Mm-hmm. I know some friends that like have business with Netflix and stuff, so we're doing we're having some talks with that. Good. I'm working on a brand new EP right now with some wow. amazing, amazing songwriters from like our local city that I've yeah. worked with, like Sean Mendez and wow. um, Jesse Reyes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I'm super excited about this EP because I'm letting it all out on the table. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not kind of keeping anything inside okay. anymore, and I think that's gonna be able to relate better with mm-hmm. people because before I was kind of like. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't say this. You should just no. I'm, I'm totally like that myself. I'm always this whole move in silence thing, just to protect the energy. Mm-hmm. But I hear you. Like a part of my energy now is like I'm doing it regardless yeah. of what you say. Yeah. And even if I, you know, give that little heads up, I'm still doing it. Like exactly. say what you want, pray on my downfall. But regardless, I'm gonna persevere and do what I gotta do. So 100. And 2020 is gonna be a big year. I it think for is. everyone. I think so too. Like mm-hmm. it's a total new decade. This is probably the first year that or new decade that media and like social media has really popped off so oh like gosh, we huge. can we have a whole platform to kind of showcase yeah. ourselves and really grow and become like who we want to be so i, agree I love that it. but 2020 thank baby thank you so much for being here thank i you. really appreciate your time and sharing your story and congrats and good luck with everything that's happening Appreciate you. You.